The following tutorial is brought to you by WholeLoops.com. It's production time. I'm Reed Stefan, realist puppet in the game. Today, I'm bringing you five more hidden treasures in Ableton that will improve your workflow forever. Now, if you're a producer like me, when you start songs, you compose a little bit and then develop the idea and then go compose the next idea and then stop and develop that. And you're constantly switching between recording and producing. And that means you're going into your metronome and switching this on and off a lot. If you use Ableton 10, you now have access to a variety of different metronome sounds and this amazing option enable only while recording. And this does exactly what it says it does. So if you're just playing your song, you can't get any metronome, but as soon as you start recording, you got some click track. The next Ableton shortcut that completely expediated my workflow is the ability to scroll without having to go up here and grab this bar and pull it down. Especially if you're editing audio clips, it can really be a lot to constantly have to go up here and switch between the bottom of the screen and the top of the screen. Now in Ableton, you could simply hold Command on your Mac and scroll with your mouse. And wherever your mouse is, whether you scroll in or out, it will uh, just follow your mouse super easy. Or if you're using Ableton 9, you can always use the plus and minus options on your keyboard, but man, the scrolling, your hands are already where they need to be, really saved me a lot of time in my audio editing and MIDI editing workflow with just being able to scroll with the mouse. Hidden treasure number three. As a background element in this beat, I took one of the vocal one shots from Organic Female Vocals, available now at wholeloops.com, and <sighs> I created an audio effect rack with a reverb and a dry channel, and I put the dry channel in the left ear and the reverb in the other ear. Now let's say I want to pan this channel all the way to one side. Well, I don't really hear the reverb anymore, and now I don't hear the dry signal anymore. So what if I want to pan both of these at the same time to one side? You can right click on the pan control and select split stereo pan mode. And now you have separate panning options for the left ear's content and the right ear's content. You can send both sides over to the right, both sides over to the left, switch them around. And this is also an extremely useful feature if someone gives you a stem and a background vocal is printed in one ear only and you want to send that to both ears, you could do that right here inside the panning control. Are you tired of searching through overused, low quality vocal samples? Have you wasted days of your life mixing your embarrassing vocal recordings? Introducing the Organic Vocal Bundle, the complete collection of male and female samples, sauced up and ready to drop in your productions. The Organic Vocal Bundle is available now only at Holoops.com. My fourth hidden gem inside of Ableton is an amazing workflow improvement for MIDI. I sequence these hi-hats using the arpeggiator, and if you want to see a tutorial on how to do this, I'll put a link to my very last upload in the description so you can see how I made a hi-hat pattern just like this. And it switches to 16th notes. But if I look at the MIDI, it's just one long chord. What if I want to get the actual MIDI for what I'm hearing. All you have to do is create a MIDI channel below it and you can resample the MIDI. And all you have to do is tell it what channel you're taking the MIDI from and make sure that it's post effects. And then when you hit record and hit record here. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. And this works exactly the same for melodic content. If you were using the arpeggiator to turn your chords into a fast arp, you can get MIDI for exactly what you're hearing just by resampling the MIDI. And likewise for audio, let's say I was still working on this beat and I wanted to see how these things 
sounded backwards. Well, all this stuff is MIDI, so how do you make it backwards? So let's say we wanted to take this drum beat and do a little fill with these things backwards. So I could just highlight all these, solo them, create an audio channel here, take resampling, and we can now record ourselves a little sample of our entire drum recording. And from here, we could chop it up, flip it backwards. If you do caps lock R, you got your new drum beat backwards. So you yeah, want to do like a little yeah. intro and filter this in or whatnot. Really easy way to sample elements of your own production, whether it's MIDI or audio, Ableton has got you covered. My fifth and final secret in Ableton that's hidden in plain sight is inside of the ping pong and simple delay. As a little background element, I took this vocal ow, right here ow, and I put ow, a ping pong ow, delay ow, on it. And I wanted it to be a quarter note, but a little trick I always do is switch it to time so that you kind of manually have to guess where a quarter note is. And I know you could look at a chart and see what it is and just put it in, but I think you get something with a little bit more character if you pick a random value. But that's not the hidden feature I was talking about. If you right click on ping pong or the simple delay, you have these three options, repitch, fade, and jump. And what these are controlling is how the delays react when you adjust the speed. So let's say you wanted to make a buildup out of this. I could switch this to repitch. And now when I automate the speed on this delay to make it faster, pull it down. That's repitch and then fade. Gives you the same pitch and then jump is just says cut straight to it. But this is not really for something on a slope. This is more for a tempo change or something that was instant because as you heard, you get a lot of popping and clicking. But let's take a listen. To Boom, and that's jump. So inside of simple delay and ping pong delay, you have three different options as to how your delays react to a delay time shift. Well, there you have it. Five more of my hidden workflow treasures inside of Ableton. I hope you found this video useful. And if you'd like to see part one where I talk about my top five hidden treasures, I'll put a link to that in the description. And I'll catch you guys next time with another tutorial. Peace out.